Welcome to Automation's official design competition. In this video you are joining us for the finals of Category E, the 1965-1985 race car. Your hosts Chris and Rob are joined by today's very special guest and judge Sam Moores. Sam is a well-established car photographer, the host of the Car Chat podcast, an Instagram personality, an amateur race driver and an all-around car fanatic. For those of you who would like to see a more in-depth analysis of the finalist designs, as well as an interview with our special guest, join us for our roundtable discussion in our next video. But for now, 11 cars out of the 50 entries have made it through the pre-selection process and into these finals. Let's get into it. To me, this is a letdown after a first positive impression. The car has some good looking angles and a seemingly random assortment of lights. Riddle me this, two big scoops at the rear, but two exhausts out of the front side. Hmm. I like the color, nice classic vibes. I'm getting sort of Mercedes SLR race car type situations. I think it's good, I think it's good. I personally, I feel like it's got a slight mix of these swooping shapes and the bit more boxy ones. So decent, I like the concept, possibly make it a bit smoother. While this entry is very nicely done overall, I'm just not entirely convinced that it fits with the brief. It doesn't really look like a race car. It's more of a mid-60s to late 1960s concept car. So I feel like it's a little bit like it taking some elements from a DeLorean. Ooh, I like how you can see into the back. Powered by V6? fuel injected quite cool a bit to me I think it looks a little bit more like a road car than a race car Super nicely crafted. It does look like a worthy Dakar rally car with all the gadgets you'd need for such an endurance event. Only the weird side mounted high beam is too odd even for this creative masterpiece. Oh, I think we've got a rally car here. Yeah, I like this. Nice, concise, good design elements, fun kind of army green-esque, bringing it all together, like crack in the windscreen, yeah, spare tire on the roof, it's got a snorkel, yeah, that looks like it'd be fun to drive off-road. Good, like, I like the sort of completeness of that design.
While this entry is very well crafted and extremely detailed, from an automation perspective it's really quite good. But from a perspective of the design brief, it just doesn't really break a whole lot of new ground unfortunately. It's kind of like a Porsche 962, really, isn't it? Um, very clean design, looks good from most angles. It's just that kind of Group C prototype, I guess. It's lots of smooth shapes. Only negative, possibly. I'm not 100% sure about the back. The sort of vents and stuff on the rest of the body are really like small slats, whereas that's a little bit bigger, but it's cool. I do love a good Trans Am car. The livery on this is absolutely fantastic, but there are some details in this entry that are really a little bit of anachronism, especially the rear wing. That really doesn't fit with the era, unfortunately. I feel like this is very similar to something I've seen, but I don't know what. Very striking design. I think it's, it's kind of fun. It's I think possibly a bit over the top. Um, feels like everything's very much bolted on, but I'm not really sure what the reference material is for that one. Um, but yeah, cool, but possibly a bit over the top. That's a neat, well-made Can-Am prototype race car with likely way too much power under that lightweight shell. I quite like it, although it does look a little bit like a toy car due to its chubby lines. Cool, yeah. More prototype vibes, nice smooth shapes. More Porsche and McLaren and Can-Am era. Yeah, this is cool. I like this. Oh, I like how you can see through to the different elements of the subframe and stuff like that. Nice, nice sort of organic design. But maybe from the back, you could see more of the rear wheels, which you see, I believe you see more on these sorts of cars, just a little cutaway. But other than that, I like it.
This junior sports car has an absolutely perfect livery on it. The color combination between the wheels and the body is absolutely fantastic. I'm just not really convinced that the wing is something you'd see in a car of this era. A nice sort of overall clean design, not that disjointed. Elements, I'm not 100% sure on, but overall, nice shapes. I like it. A beefcake stock car that is kept pretty close to its original shape, but with a neat roll cage built on the inside. Pretty and fitting side decals give it some sense of flow. The rear is a bit of a letdown though. Sort of like NASCAR vibes. Very boxy of the era of the time, looks super American, you know, it's a decent design, a bit different, but like all one complete look, yeah, I like that. While I really like the color of this entry, I just don't really think it fits with the design brief. It feels a little bit too late and a little bit too much like a homologation special for the road than a true race car. Ooh, more prototype vibes. Design elements on this are really nice. This is possibly my favorite so far. Yeah, overall, clean design, looks fast, looks like it would fit in with that era, I like that. This thing has definitely got a lot of character with some really odd but appealing design choices. The bottom feeder front and busy sides with a massive box for a butt. Doesn't sound appealing, but it somehow is. Ooh, sort of Ferrari P. Is it four five sports prototypes this one is a 12 cylinder yeah all the right noises i like the vibe they're going for i think it's possibly it's, it's got a real mix of flowing shapes and sort of the boxy rear 
I think it might be a little bit nicer if it was a bit more flowing, but cool thing. This Japanese super silhouette car is absolutely wonderful, with great details absolutely everywhere you look, both inside and out, and the livery is absolutely fantastic. I've really, really liked this design. Hey, bit different. Group V rally vibes, yes. Super boxy, or possibly even hill climb. I like how it's picked a style, boxy, edgy, and sort of followed through. It's a possibly a little, I don't know whether the proportions are 100% right, but overall, it's fun, boxy design, I like it. And there we have it. Big congratulations goes to JM for the winning design, to Rift Hunter 4 for second place and to Cavalier Tide Potato for third place. For a more in-depth analysis of today's finalists, as well as an interview with our special guest, join us for our roundtable discussion in the next video. Also, subscribe to the channel and check out the competition playlist to not miss any of the fantastic and questionable designs that we showcase. Let us know what you thought of the featured designs in the comments below and visit the Automation Game Instagram channel where you can vote for your favorite finalist in our story.